not born digital native. I can't switch from an Android phone to an iPhone. But I have some personal reasons of not switching to an iPhone. Anything that's proprietary eventually collapses unless the company changes the direction. Look at Apple. First time getting taken a hit. Either it transforms itself or it doesn't. So you never know. I had a slide that I took off. If you can't force the change, Facebook. If you can't force yourself to disrupt Facebook, somebody else will. Can you imagine Facebook dying? Right now? Can you predict Facebook dying? It can't predict, but it can happen. Or could die. Or could die. IMC died, IQC died, Messenger died, Microsoft is still alive, iPod died. You know the biggest computer, what sells in the computer market, Unicenter and Sasi Arcade, what do you think sells the most? Cordless speakers. Why? Cordless speakers. Why? Phones are back in Sunta Garme, Dada Jam Dham Dhar, whatever, Kamre Me. Now tell me where the mother is going to hide those speakers. Under the bed, you still will be able to connect those Bluetooth to the room later. My wife used to hand Coke cans under the under a bed, the girls used to find them anyways. No, you can't, because she'll probably connect it to something. You know, I I read this Mars chocolate actually did a study. They put an RFID on every chocolate wrapper. They wanted to find out where do people eat chocolate, not buy chocolate only, but where do they actually consume the chocolate? How much time do they take between buying the chocolate, ripping the wrapper off, and taking the first bite? So they stripped the whole RFID on the whole strip and said, Kitni karte. So they will also know okay, style kya, puri likha ke, puri khaat aal lete, ya haathin thode gundi rati, you know that sticky thing. You know what they found out with all due respect to them. The target market was, I think, about 18,000 people. Wow. You know where most Americans eat their chocolate from their top sample population? In the toilet. Majority of the <coughs> You know what they decided to do? As an output of that study, they put vending machine inside the women's bathroom. And it sold better than it was selling otherwise. How an, embar an embarrassing behavior to discuss in a public place like this, right? <laughs> and you're talking about privacy? Give me a break. <laughs> Tomorrow they'll say, Ah, we know where the students in IPS smoke. Why? Because the cigarette will probably start emitting this. Or they say, you know what? <clears throat> there is a shoe I, uh, I'm trying to get it, but I don't <laughs> get it because the PTA will kill me if I get it. It actually tells you which nerve down from your heel and your toe up to your hip, which is your nervous system, is how healthy. You want to go to an orthopedic? No, you don't. The data will come. The diagnosis will come. It will connect to a medical record system, big data, from many patients. And it will become what? A prognosis and a treatment, all automated coming on your phone. It's going to be connected with you. The only condition you have is you have to keep your phone somewhere close by when you're waiting that will work. Who's trying to patent this? Nike? No, no, no. And it has, no, no, no. This bunch of six guys sitting in a garage. They'll probably charge Nike a billion, billion and a half, maybe a couple of billion. Are you talking about unemployment? <laughs> Talk about high value employment. Any other question? Uh, OS has a question for you. Yeah, OS, yes. shoot. Detail. So if you could elaborate on the basis of uh, privacy, he wants to know how is it going to, where is it going to head and which things are going to remain where? Uh, not that I'm a specialist on the subject. I just had the privilege of working closely with Dr. Rahman, Dr. Tarman's group, where we said we need that, 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 that number of laws in Pakistan. Uh, I was a co-author of the Electronic Transaction Ordinance, where electronic document became evidence also. So during that study, if you really want to study what privacy acts are good, it, the best acts come from Australia, New Zealand, and Canada. 
So because you're researching, I suppose, on that. As far as how much of an impact uh, it will have uh, ways, uh, the pundits say, I'm, the, I'm not uh, an expert on the subject, the pundits say that it will be invading your movement privacy, if you like. Wherever you move, whatever you spend, so wherever you go, they will probably be able to invade that privacy. Whether there will be regulations, there is a lot of talk in the US, and particularly in UK, UK being much more conservative in uh, privacy things, although they are the most per capita camera in anywhere on the planet, uh, CCTV cameras anywhere on the planet, for security reasons. But personally, I think, and the pundits, I don't necessarily have to agree with them, the statement is true. There will be no privacy, and there will be greatly difficult to manage or regulate privacy or privacy invasion. Where there'll be a law or will be there be set of laws that will regulate and control those uh, privacy measures, I think technology will stay ahead of the law because technology is moving at a faster pace than the legislators actually passing the legislation at the same pace. So it will be a cat, cat and mouse game, uh, which happens whenever technology comes. So I can't predict where it will go from 15, 20 years from now. But uh, it is going to be embarrassingly unprivate is probably the only phrase I can use here. Does it answer your question? Tell me what you said. I mean, this is called digital. Can you imagine 10 years ago you could do this? Real demonstration. So could you repeat that question or did I do it? I have you in my hand. <laughs> Skype, you can speak. Yep. Do we have true. Skype there? Do we have a Skype? Uh, because of the short notice, we couldn't. Oh, true, I agree. Okay, That's true. You're, you're, on, you're, you're on the spot. I mean, you're on the dot. You said what you said is right. Absolutely agree with it. No dispute about it. Entirely agree with it. Yeah, yeah, because it's, it's very challenging. It's a, it's a very challenging subject. I hope you can keep pace with technology. It's not, no, it's not possible. He's actually researching. This is a waste. He's researching on privacy. He's teaching privacy law in Germany. And I'm asking, can you keep pace with technology? He's saying it's impossible. Thank you for vindicating. And thank you for organizing this event. OK, back to uh, any other question? Sorry, what was the question? Um, will there, what will be privacy like? I said there won't be any privacy. See, if you want me to go into a little depth of it, um, anything that is on your person will be readable by someone, right? Anybody, and this is not about clandestine stuff like the CIA, the ISI, the RAWs, or the Mossad's part. Okay, it is for your own benefit. It is for benefit of people who are not that privileged in society also. I mean, you have a camera that looks like a dot of a pencil. How many cameras do you want? This connected car, you know how many cameras it had at the front? More than 100. And there are a lot of dots on the bumper. Or it's on a shield inside, which if you can't damage, you're going to get it. The number of cameras that will transmit data is going to be humongously large. The challenge is getting through that data and analyzing it. Do you have the mind to actually do that? Have you been exposed to an environment where data comes like a flood? And you have the capacity, the training, the background to actually sit on that data and analyze it for your corporate benefit, for your business benefit, for your revenue benefit. Do you have that skill set here? I met somebody very senior from a very large organization in Pakistan who does about 18, 20 billion of revenue every year. He said, Furkan, this is where we are we're looking for someone. We can't find one. 
this country in the IT industry, thirty years before, is witness to it. Struggled to find people who could do technical writing for IT manuals. It struggled. Five years on into this campaign of the e-commerce thing. In 2005, I found a girl in the hall who was a technical writer, qualified, coming back from the U.S., complaining that there is no demand for me. I found her a job in a very large bank, then planning to move headquarters to Lahore. They offered her a salary of 45,000 rupees. She said, "Are they crazy? It takes 45,000 dollars of intellect to write a manual." Of a consumer banking application, hire me as a consultant. They weren't willing to. She went back. I am still looking for technical writers for one of my consulting assignments in Lahore. Can't find one. We just haven't gone that side. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we still think it's a unique. A person is a technical person, a sociologist is a sociologist. We somebody who is able to manage both. And uh, that's where we are struggling. Some people dislike me because I talk marketing, sales, and technology at the same time. How can we do that? I said, because I didn't learn technology over my life. I was sales room by three. I was lectured by the company, the corporate world, to be a businessman by practice. And I keep in touch with this. If you if you don't keep in touch with this, you lose. You miss two weeks of uh, your subscriptions on the internet because you have only email. You lose touch. I have a question. We have this huge big database that we do all the data mining. What do you mean by How huge many? database? What like number? Nadra is the largest database in Pakistan. The seventy-five terabytes. Hey, may may ask the presentation. They will have no choice if they want to survive. If they if they want to survive, they'll have to shift. No, so you don't. Like he said, uh, Rahim said, the tanga still runs. The tanga will continue to run. The tanga still runs carrying agricultural products in UK, Europe, and the US. They haven't thrown it away because some places they still don't have roads. The US mobile network penetration is as good or bad as Pakistan's. The Indian mobile penetration is just such a huge country that even Coke and Pepsi haven't gone to the rural areas fully, as they have in Pakistan. The size is so big. So it's a question of saying, yes, it will happen. Yes, there will be data mining, but the, the science of data mining is there. The art lies in the fact that you can actually visualize what you want to drag from there to apply it to your business. That challenge because the variety of data will be so massive and the quantity of data will be so huge. There will be computing power to solve that problem. But would you be able to manage the number of variables that come out of there? अभी क्या यार spreadsheet में चौसठ column में data डालते हैं. 64 variables is all you have and probably 60 of them are coming as child of the four roots. Here you will have data. I mean, look at Facebook. It's gone crazy. What kind of data do you think they capture? Mostly videos now. No content. What do they capture? Conversations, free fall conversations, ID conversations, whatever conversation. What do they catch in them? They catch keywords. They catch keywords, and then they say, "Okay, this country." They will do this. They say, "This country produced 25 billion." Words repeated within a 365-day period called jihad. Like this allegation against Pakistan, which I ceaselessly protest about, is maligning Pakistan, saying we are the largest country watching pornographic material on the internet. It can't be. We are only 14 million, 24 million people on the internet. Give me a break. And 24 million people on the internet. 20 million smartphones added to it. Take the average out. It's about 22, 23 million actually using mobile internet. Everything, everybody watches it. No, it can't be. It's not. A, pornography doesn't have a 98% penetration in our mobile phone population. 
that's contradicted by that statement. But true okay? Indian Parliament has videos of members of the assembly watching porn sitting in the assembly when they launched 3G, by the way. At least our information in the hasn't gone that far. <laughs> but you see, you can use it anywhere as you like. My only problem here, my only contention here is that this country has to move and this is some skill that is developed at a campus level. Whether it is a certification level, whether it's a degree level, whether it is a master's level or a PhD level or a school level, that creative thinking to sift through data, this is the challenge, S-I-F-T, sift through data when it's so massive is going to be human humanity's biggest challenge. That's mm -hmm. like what I like to cover. Mothers are already doing it. Mothers are already doing it. Some they people are doing much, it. Much, much advanced than whatever. Patients like me is a website in the US, by the way. In case you have some family members who've got chronic diseases, register yourself. It's free. It's called Patients Like Me. Yeah. So let's say if you're somebody has a chronic cardiac disease, Register your elder on that site, patients like me. If you have diabetic, register yourself. If you have, if you have or your parents have, or your elders have, or your relatives or friends have. Patients like me will break you down and say, okay, what do you have? He says, I've got diabetic. He'll put you in connection with the entire world that you registered with diabetic. Their back end engine actually starts analyzing. 64% of the people use that insulin from that manufacturer and so on and so forth. I can go on unless you stop me. Besides, I'm not at home. Besides, I'm not at home. I don't have to report to my wife tonight, so it's okay. Thank you very much for the patience and the time. Appreciate it. No, I do. I do. I do. I do. <laughs> no, I have to. These are basically, well, my role is here. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for coming, taking out this time. And what I'd like to fill you up is how did IBA Conversations 1.0 start out? We have a group of IBA alumni who've collected together in over a uh, some time we sort of uh, created some visions and some ideas and we've created um, a couple of groups which are working on certain projects. The first one to take off is IBA Conversations and hopefully this will continue on a uh, regular basis. The purpose is not only to connect IBA together, but to engage and especially speak on current topics of interest. And we shall have them at a certain frequency. We are looking forward to uh, people who would like to speak and contribute. And we are looking forward to people who can be our backbone, because any event cannot be held without a team. So time and effort in terms of resources are required. There has been a disconnect between the 50 odd um, or more um, graduation batches. Is it 57 was the first one? And 2016 is now. So how, many, how much does some? 60 years. 60 years? 60 batches. We're about 13,000 alumni, and I think some of us have met for the first time. We first, 
However, this group has to grow not from 20, but to 20,000. So you need to help us out. IBA Conversations is one project, and we hope to continue that. And thanks to Uwe sitting in Germany and uh, so many others, especially Shazia, Furkan the speaker, uh, Rahim, and everybody. This has materialized. Another project is, uh, which we call, we would like to call, is the recognition of IBA, the Hall of Fame. Top 100 were.